my name is Amelia Miller and this is a Magic and Magnum. So this is a mix between a tower defense game and a capture the flag game with we're using di dynamic terrain using sand. So we're gonna pick a faction using our touch buttons. So I'm gonna be magic. So now we have 30 seconds to create the terrain and we do this with the sand. So if I build up a mountain, I actually have a mountain. So I'm gonna build this nice mountain range right here. Troops do not like water and they do not like mountains. This is, the, this is true for both sets of troops, so always keep that in mind while you're digging. We give players 30 seconds to dig around in the sand and then we give them some time to dust off because the sand does stick to you a little bit. All right. That sound means it's time to take your hands out of the sandbox. So now we get to place our towers. Each tower represents a different unit that you can spawn. So this first tower is your grunt unit. They are very weak, but they spawn very fast. So I like to keep them very close to me. In order to place a tower, you stick your hand out into the sand. You wait until your cursor turns bright green. When it turns bright green, you will drop a tower and you'll hear the sound for it. Back out of the sandbox, go back into the sandbox and place your next tower. The last tower you're gonna place is your engineer tower. It's the most important. I like to put it as close to the danger as possible. The last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna capture your flag. You're gonna place your flag, which is the objective of the game. It goes to catch the flag. So I'm gonna put this right back here. You close that the same way. Now our game has no physical controls. They are all virtual controls. And the way you control them is just by hovering over a button very quickly. Because we're checking with brightness on our buttons, we can push more than one button at the same time. Underneath each player has a green bar or a red bar. The green bar means that it represents the player's health. And the red bar represents your tower's cooldown time because it has been destroyed. Each character has a red ring around it when their button has been selected. This is their cooldown time. When a character is in its cooldown time, you cannot select them. They can only be selected if their tower is active and if there is no cooldown time. There are also several things that a player can look at rather than the buttons. There are stats on the right and left hand side of either button which show off your damage dealt, damage taken, evacuated troops, and enemy evacuated troops. The only way to evacuate a troop is to destroy all of the enemy's towers. Once all towers have been evacuated, when you spawn troops rather than them running to a tower, they will run to the center portal. The center portal is where they will be able to evacuate from. Also right behind me, you'll see a screen. That screen is showing what happens on the battlefield in real time. So you can see our little guys running around right now. It's focusing on my orcs. So players can also look at a small ticker tape along the top bar. That top bar ticker tape will decide who, will show you who dies, who's winning, show off advertisements, stuff of that nature. Currently, I'm getting beaten hard. So then, once all of, the, all of this has been set up, the best thing you can possibly do is just spam the buttons as fast as possible. Hopefully you're faster than your opponent. Each minute is, each game is about three minutes long and I lost. And that is the first time in a while. Good job. Thank you for watching. If you're interested to learn more, please check us out at codemonkeys.com and experiencetorch.com.